Disclaimer. None of the songs, including intro, artworks, including thumbnail, or characters in the video are mine. This is not an accurate portrayal of the characters. This is not a defamation of character either. This is only for entertainment. Warning. Foul language. Grammatical mistakes. Typographical errors. Sakusa doesn't know when he started to hate Atsumu. It might be when Sakusa made him wait for hours in the rain because he forgot their date and Atsumu still greeted him with a smile. It might be when after that, Atsumu got sick and instead of getting mad, he apologized to Sakusa for the germs. Or it might even be before they started dating, when Atsumu, the arrogant selfish prick Atsumu was the only one who didn't look at him weirdly for his phobia. It might have been the cause of one event, or it might have been gradual, the pile up of everything, of every time Atsumu just accepted every emotional and mental abuse that Sakusa threw his way. The point is, Sakusa hates Atsumu. He hates the way Atsumu causes butterflies in his stomach. Hates how Atsumu makes his heart pound. Hates how Atsumu makes him blush. Hates how he keeps searching for Atsumu. The way he craves him. The way he wants Atsumu always close to him. Sakusa hates how Atsumu makes him feel. He hates how he loves him. Because Sakusa. Sakusa has never known love. As a rich kid who grew up in a family that cared more about money than their own. As someone whose parents were forced together for more money. More fame. For a contract. Sakusa knew love as nothing but fantasy for fools. It's about who can fake a smile the best in front of cameras. It's about going home to a cold mansion after, while his parents search for warmth in another people's arms. Love is cold, is calculated. It's a game that will take everything you have, bleeding you dry until you have nothing left. So when Atsumu, who absolutely cannot lie, told him he loves Sakusa, it made him sick. His entire body fought between feeling warm or cold. Because he is loved, not just tolerated. He was wanted, not just a necessary evil. And Sakusa, Sakusa loved it. At the same time, he felt dread. When they started dating, it was with the knowledge that Atsumu would one day leave him. It was a simple fact of life. Sakusa is rude. Sakusa is selfish. Sakusa is a germaphobe. Love isn't real. And people will leave him for the reasons above. So yes, Sakusa knew Atsumu will leave him one day. It's only a matter of when, and how long he can put up with Sakusa. Sakusa knew that Atsumu was like him in a lot of ways. They were both powerful volleyball players, but more than that, they both had almost identical flaws that caused people to hate them. They were both arrogant, selfish, doesn't take failure from their teammates, didn't compromise for others, and they were both prideful and competitive. When they got together, it was because Sakusa respected Atsumu. They got along surprisingly well and Sakusa wanted to at least experience what it feels like to be in a relationship. It's not like it'll actually last since their feelings are all only superficial. He didn't love him. He didn't. Sakusa doesn't do love, and neither does Atsumu. It wasn't until after their first month of dating when Atsumu came to Tokyo to celebrate their first monthsary that Sakusa started being suspicious. It wasn't until Sakusa told Atsumu how stupid, useless, and a complete waste of time he thinks the event is that Sakusa realized. It wasn't until he saw hurt that passed briefly through Atsumu's eyes and the pained laugh that followed as Atsumu brushed his cruel comment off that Sakusa knew. Atsumu actually, genuinely loved, liked him, and Sakusa was confused, scared, shaken, irritated. There wasn't supposed to be any feelings involved. They are going to part ways one day. No need to make things unnecessarily difficult. Even then, Sakusa couldn't quite bottle up the joy, anger that bloomed in his chest. After that, Sakusa did everything he could to encourage Atsumu to leave him but no matter what he does, no matter how cruel he is, Atsumu would always, always, take it, brush it off with a smile. He hated how Atsumu would let him do the things he does to him without a fight. Always with an excuse for him even when Sakusa never, not once offered even a half-assed apology. And it terrified, angered Sakusa. Atsumu was kind, patient, understanding, loving, good, so good, weak. And Sakusa hates him for it. It made him feel worthless, useless, undeserving, guilty, so fucking guilty, angry. Because why is Atsumu strong? Confident, arrogant, prideful Atsumu letting someone walk all over him? Why is Atsumu still here? 
Why won't he leave? Why hasn't he left already? Because he loves you. His mind whispered. Sakusa wouldn't admit to anyone but that realization filled him with so much joy he felt like his heart would burst. And he was afraid he'd crave that feeling. The joy and love Atsumu freely gives him. Scared that he'd grow addicted. Until he could no longer live without it. So he ignored it. Locked it away in a box and buried it deep. So deep. Unbidden. His mind whispered again. Why haven't you left? Because I love him too. And that. More than anything in his life. Terrified him. He is growing addicted, falling so deeply in love that sooner or later, he won't be able to walk back out. Love is not real. It is. No it's not. Atsumu loves you. That's real. It will end. You don't know that. Yes I do. Atsumu would never do that to you. Sakusa ignored his heart. Every time he imagined himself in the future together with Atsumu. Married in sweet. Domestic bliss. It all ends. Every. Single. Time. The fear that his family might interfere isn't even at the top of the list of reasons. Sakusa never cared about his family's fortune anyway. He was prepared to follow the footsteps of his mother's cousin and run away if he was forced to. No. His biggest fear is Atsumu falling out of love. Finding someone better. Cheat on him. It's about Atsumu leaving him willingly and running to someone else's arms. And Sakusa knows that there's a very high possibility of that happening. So he became even more cruel. When Atsumu left the group chat and vanished for 10 days. Sakusa thought. This is it. He'll finally leave. That thought almost made Sakusa collapse in despair. Grief. Fear. Hurt. Sadness. Pain pain pain. Relief. No more anxiety. No more dreading when. Because he now knows when. It will finally end. But that's not what happened. No. Instead. Atsumu came back bearing gifts. As if he wasn't just abused by his boyfriend. So Sakusa snapped. Clearly. Atsumu planned on playing the long game and won't leave so easily. Sakusa broke up with him. And Atsumu actually begged him not to. Like he actually needed Sakusa and desperately wanted to keep him when in fact. Sakusa was the one who needed him. Was the one who'll be utterly alone if. When Atsumu leaves. Because Atsumu. Confident arrogant. Understanding selfish. Kind asshole Atsumu is actually loved by many. And Sakusa understands doesn't know why. Sakusa collapsed in relief when Atsumu was finally gone. He was more persistent than he thought. Keeping up the charade for so long. But he's gone now. He's finally gone. Sakusa can relax now. But the calm didn't last long. It took less than a day for the pain to sink in. It was too much sometimes that he couldn't even move. But he signed up for this. And he knows it'll end soon. So he sucked it up and tried to continue normally. But somehow. He couldn't find it in himself to tell Komori. What if we get back together again? He couldn't gain the courage to return at Sumu's things. They are the only things I have left that reminds me of him. He found himself keeping Atsumu's bag in his closet, hidden and safe. And sometimes, he'd take one out and press it to his nose as he slept, inhaling what was left of Atsumu's scent. He found himself opening Atsumu's gift and finding two identical shoes. He found himself tracing the pattern on the shoes, admiring it and imagining himself and Atsumu wearing them together. I miss him. And he does. So much. He almost lost control sometimes, almost reaching for his phone and call Atsumu, to ask him back, but he managed to stop himself. It didn't stop his heart from racing when he entered the training camp building though, it didn't stop him from searching the place for Atsumu, and he found him, talking to his cousin. Sakusa's first reaction when he saw Atsumu was awe, beautiful. He never thought Atsumu could become even prettier, but somehow he was able to. Then he frowned. I knew it. He laughed bitterly to himself. He moved on so fast. If Atsumu still loves him, then he should look like a mess. Still look hurt but somehow he glowed and looked even more beautiful. I knew it wasn't real. You moved on so fast. Then he saw it. He saw Atsumu's eyes start to water. Saw the pain in them as they looked at Sakusa. Then Atsumu ran away. Sakusa was concerned. He wanted to run after Atsumu and comfort him. Embrace him. Kiss him. But Komori stopped him. Sakusa can't deny it to himself though. That the sight of Atsumu hurting made him happy. Cruel but true. It wasn't because he's sadistic and just like seeing Atsumu in pain. No. 
It's because it means that Atsumu hasn't moved on yet and that he still has feelings for Sakusa. Feelings he couldn't get over so easily. The joy he's feeling, knowing that Atsumu still loves him, loosened his restraint. Achu still loves me. He probably misses me like I miss him then. He wanted to feel happy, even just temporarily. He wanted to be happy with Atsumu. He's not going to get back with him but maybe they can bask in each other's presence for a while. Until the training camp is over and they can go back to their own worlds. Maybe we could still be friends. We were friends before we became a couple. It would be a waste to throw that away just because we broke up. Sakusa decided. He would try to he friends with Atsumu. When lunch came. He first went to his room and was pleasantly surprised to see Atsumu there. He debated whether or not to wake Atsumu but decided to let him rest. He left the room to go have lunch, but not before pressing a small kiss to Atsumu's forehead. Nothing important happened on the first day of camp so he just stayed in his room and watched, sometimes glancing at Atsumu. When dinner came and he saw Atsumu start to move, he went closer to him, trying to gently wake him up. He was kind of guilty and hurt at Atsumu's distressed reaction to him though. And he was deeply worried when Atsumu left in that state. What if something happens to him? What if he doesn't notice his surroundings? Sakusa sighed and shook those worries off. Atsu's an adult. He can take care of himself. But that worry just grew even more when it's already near midnight and Atsumu's still not back. He waited for him to get home. Fighting off his sleep and getting cranky. He's just so worried. Maybe that's why he couldn't stop himself from being so blunt. Where have you been? Where have you been? What? Atsumu stood stock still, his eyes wide and mouth open as he stared at Sakusa, trying to comprehend what the is happening, and what all the emotions swirling in his body are. What? Atsumu laughed incredulously. The situation he's in is so surprising that it's almost funny. I asked where have you been? Are you aware what time it is? Those words did nothing but confuse Atsumu further, and maybe irritate him. He couldn't contain the scoff that escaped him. He looked around the room, trying to look for answers but could find nothing. So he just scoffed incredulously again. He looked to Sakusa again, to see him glaring at him, demanding answers he no longer has the right to know. Atsumu still doesn't know what's happening, but he ignored it and instead focused on the fact that he's being belittled, treated like a naughty child, and by someone who has absolutely no right to. He's mad, he's confused, he's scared, and he doesn't know what to do. So he just focused on his anger, because that's the only one that made sense. The only one that doesn't make Atsumu feel vulnerable. Who who the fuck do you think you are? Sakusa's eyes widened as he stepped back. Atsumu could feel his entire body tremble. Feel his heart twist. Hear his head scream. You have no right to ask me that. Like why? Why do you care? I'm not your boyfriend anymore. What I do is none of your business. Atsumu growled at Sakusa who was just watching him in shock. But Atsumu forgot one thing about himself. He's an angry crier. Always has been. And he'd always hated it. The only time he doesn't cry when angry is when he takes the anger off physically. Which Osamu is often there for because his brother is almost always the cause of his anger. But Osamu's not here. Not anymore. Atsumu felt his entire body heat up. Rising to his head. Rising to his eyes where they manifested in tears. And suddenly, he's weak again. Just like he always is in front of Sakusa. Weak. Vulnerable. Pathetic. He immediately turned around when he felt his eyes water. Trying to preserve what was left of his dignity. He jumped on the bed and turned towards the window. Away from Sakusa who was still standing in shock. A few minutes later, he heard footsteps which made him stiffen. Then he heard a rustling on the bed beside his. It still took a few minutes for Atsumu to relax waiting for Sakusa to go to sleep. Then he sobbed, his tears flowing freely down his face and into his pillow. In the silent of the night, Atsumu laid quivering on his bed, eyes clenched tight, and both hands clamped over his mouth in a pitiful attempt to hide his tears, the cause of which is peacefully sleeping just a meter beside him. The amount of relief Atsumu felt when he woke up to an empty room almost coaxed him back to sleep. Unfortunately, he has things to do that requires being awake early in the morning. So he mustered all the energy he can and got out of bed. He stretched and did a small exercise, just to wake his body up. Then as he was about to fix his bed, 
He remembered how it irritated Sakusa to see an unmade bed. So in a sudden burst of pettiness, Atsumu decided to further mess up his bed. He smirked in satisfaction at the result then went to take a bath. Before going to breakfast, like yesterday, he felt a piercing gaze on him as soon as he entered the cafeteria. It was making him anxious. He hated it. Then he felt a tap on his shoulder. Atsumu-san. Atsumu smiled at him. Tobiu-kun. Kajima nodded at him. Um, do you want to get our meals together? Atsumu snorted, relaxing slightly. Ikora's awkward blueberry son is surprisingly adorable. When he's not unconsciously glaring that is. Sure Tobio-kun. They got their meals and sat down together along with others. Not including Sakusa and company of course. Atsumu-san. Atsumu hummed. How is Ikora-san? Atsumu softened. It makes him so happy to see people care and appreciate Ikora. He's doing great actually. We have friends who are helping him and I'm really grateful to them. Kajima nodded. He relaxed a bit but he still looked as if he wanted to ask something but either he didn't know what to ask or he didn't know how to ask. Do you want to come with me later? Kora and I are going out. Along with Sugar and the others. Can I? Atsumu nodded with a smile. Well maybe. I'll ask for permission later to see if you can. Kajima nodded excitedly, not even thinking about the possibility that he might not get permission. After breakfast, Atsumu went closer to an organizer to ask permission to go out and take Kajima with him. The organizer allowed them but only if they get back before 10 p.m. And that Atsumu's responsible for Kajima and that he should take care of him. Atsumu nodded then asked the question he was dreading. Can I change rooms? Or get permission to live off site? May I know your reason? Atsumu debated whether he should make up a story or not. He doesn't really want to air out his teenage problems that adults will probably brush off. At the same time, Atsumu is a horrible liar. Any lie he comes up with will be so obvious and probably won't make any sense. So he sighed in defeat and just told the organizer the truth. I, Omi, I mean Sakusa, my roommate, is my ex. We just broke up recently and I don't really want to be with him right now. Atsumu held his breath as the organizer examined him. He then stiffened when she sighed. I'm sorry. I would like to help you but unfortunately, we can't do that. Oh. Atsumu sagged as his throat tightened. He didn't really hear nor did he want to listen to why exactly they can't change his rooms. He's just focused on the fact that he's going to have to spend the entire week sleeping in the same room as Sakusa. But, Atsumu perked up at that. We can allow you to stay off site if, you can get a written permission from your parents. If something bad happens to you, it'll be our fault but if you get your parents permission and proof of that permission, we can let you go. Oh. Atsumu deflated once more. He doesn't really want to bother his parents anymore with his teenage angst. He'll just have to bear with it. It's only for a week after all. Everything was going normal. Going fine. If you ignore the fact that Atsumu can still feel Sakusa's gaze on him. How is he even looking at me right now? We're in a match. And not even the same one. The gym is big enough for three games to be played at once. And even though Atsumu and Sakusa are in entirely different teams. Entirely different games. And are on opposite sides of the court. Sakusa's gaze still managed to reach Atsumu. Can't you just pay attention to your own game and mind your damn business? Atsumu tried his best to ignore it but it was hard. On the bright side, it irritated him so much that he was even more motivated. Then they took a break. Atsumu was so determined in ignoring Sakusa that he didn't notice him come close. I'm sorry. Atsumu stopped himself from flinching violently. Prevent himself from showing he's affected. He didn't look at Sakusa. Pretending that he doesn't exist. But on the inside, he can feel his heart beat faster and he can feel his blood run faster as well. As if urging him to get away. Or maybe to get closer. I stepped out of line last night. I was worried because it was already late. Atsumu stiffened. Worried? He's worried about me. Hundreds of emotions. Known and unknown are swirling inside him right now. So much that it's overwhelming him. Is he happy? Is he hurt? Is he hopeful? Is he angry? Does he want to punch Sakusa? Or does he want to kiss him? The answer is, he wants everything. Atsumu stood still as he stared blankly at the wall in front of him. 
his mind buzzing with questions he doesn't know to answer, doesn't even know if he wants the answer. His head grew heavy and twinged in pain as his thoughts and feelings overwhelmed him. His breathing came in short unnoticeable pants as his vision start to blacken. Before Atsumu loses it though, he felt air enter his system once more, as if he's no longer in the middle of a crowd, as if he's no longer cornered. He blinked, confused at the sudden change, which is when he noticed that Sakusa was already walking away. Then he realized how close Sakusa had been, so close that Atsumu could smell him, his scent filling his senses, making him dizzy. And when he was gone, Atsumu could finally breathe. At the same time, he wanted to chase him for more. Atsumu thought that was the end of it. That Sakusa will finally leave him alone. He thought wrong. Here at you. Atsumu eyed the water Sakusa handed him in disbelief. He just stared at it. Like a math problem he doesn't know how to solve. He accepted it in the end but only because they've been standing like that for so long that they've gained the attention of others. Thanks. He murmured then left. He wanted to go and get another water and throw away what Sakusa gave him but they took too much time just standing there that they're already calling for the next match. And Atsumu's awfully thirsty. So he just drank it. The next time they took a break, Atsumu flinched hard when he felt a hand on his face. Sakusa was wiping his sweat. Atsumu stood in shock not even realizing what was happening. Then he felt himself getting pulled away, and vaguely noticed Komori blocking Sakusa's path. Atsumu looked at Kajima, the one who pulled him, in a daze, still confused. All that really registered was that Kajima was glaring at Sakusa. Before he could say something, the next match was called. Lo and behold, they're teammates. Atsumu is growing really frustrated and absolutely confused at Sakusa's behavior. Nice kill Achu. Nice receive Achu. Nice serve Achu. Don't mind. Sakusa keeps complimenting with that nickname that still makes his heart flutter. He hates it. He hates how much he loves it. Sakusa even became reckless. For him anyway. He no longer hesitates and takes time to calculate anything. He just goes and runs to spike the ball set to him. Someone dared to ask him and Sakusa's only answer was, I trust Achu. And Atsumu wants to cry. He wants to curl in on himself and just ignore the entire world. It got so bad his head hurt from trying to figure out what is happening. Frustrated tears started to blur his vision, making him miss the spike aimed at him. Atsumu received it with his face. The impact sent him to the floor, his vision spinning and nose bleeding. Achu, Achu. He can hear the words, but he's too dizzy to respond. I'll take him to the clinic. He can hear the other players moving around him. Then he felt himself being lifted up. The sudden motion almost made him throw up but he stopped it at the last second. Arcting to lean on the shoulder of the one carrying him like a princess. Atsumu was dizzy but he was aware enough of his surroundings that he knows who's holding him. Knows who's crassling him like he's precious. He weakly pushed Sakusa. Not enough to really move him because the movements are making Atsumu more dizzy but enough to show that he wants Sakusa away. Go away. Push. Go away please push. But Atsumu couldn't speak. He felt like if he opened his mouth, he would puke. He was almost tempted to do it, just so he could disgust Sakusa. But he can't take humiliating himself any further. Not to mention that vomiting actually hurts his stomach and the sudden movement of Sakusa going away from him will just make him more dizzy. Atsumu groaned in pain as his head danced when Sakusa tried to fix his position. SHH. I'm here Atsu. We're just waiting for the nurse. Hold on for a bit. Atsumu wanted to scream at him. He wanted to sob. His head hurts so much and Sakusa's behavior is making it spin even more. He tried to push Sakusa even harder but Sakusa just pulled him closer. Atsumu felt relief when he heard the door open and the nurse walked in. She shooed Sakusa away hallelujah then tended to Atsumu. Speaking in a calm and gentle voice that doesn't grate his ears and make his headache worse. Atsumu was only vaguely aware of what was happening around him as he finally gave in to the pain and passed out. When he woke up, it was already afternoon and their training just finished. He panicked thinking that he missed their hangout and abruptly stood up. He almost fell to the floor and probably cracked his head again but he was caught by none other than Sakusa. His eyes widened and he slapped Sakusa's hands away as he took a step back. So you should be good in a few hours. 
I advise you to rest and not do anything strenuous. Okay. So I know that concussions normally take days to heal but for the sake of the story. Let's say the really mild ones only take a few hours. The nurse did a few more checkups before he deemed him ready to go. Atsumu stood up. He's still a little bit dizzy but nothing he can't handle. Still. Sakusa seemed to think he was a helpless cripple so he stepped forward and tried to help Atsumu. Atsumu slapped his hands away once more as he glared at him. He opened his mouth to ask. To demand. Why? Why are you acting like this? But before he could, the door opened once more and Kajiyama, Hoshiumi, and Kamori burst in. Atsumu-san. Atsumu. Atsumu. Kajiyama took one look at the scene in front of him and immediately stood between Sakusa and Atsumu. Kyo, what are you doing here? Kamori sent an apologetic look to Atsumu, then a confused yet irritated one to his cousin as he started to pull him away from Atsumu. Koma struggled to do so as Sakusa wouldn't budge. Kyo, let's go. Kamori demanded through gritted teeth while Sakusa just stared at Atsumu who was trying not to hide behind a glaring Kajiyama. Maybe he finally noticed that his presence wasn't welcome so Sakusa finally let Kamori pull him away. Hoshiumi watched the entire scene confused. The nurse already left. What was that? Why isn't Sakusa welcome here? I thought he was your boyfriend? Atsumu flinched unconsciously, not even knowing why. It was Kajima who answered. Sakusa-san broke up with him. Wow well, what? Then why the fuck was he acting like that? I thought you were fine because he was finally acting like a proper boyfriend. But he broke up with you. What the fuck's the matter with him? Maybe all the feelings Atsumu felt the entire day bubbled over. All the anger, the pain, the confusion, and even the positive ones he never wanted to feel. Or he always wanted to feel. The point is, Atsumu's had enough. I don't know. He snapped. His hoarse voice cracking. I don't know okay. I don't know why he's being sweet. Why he's acting as if we're still together when he never acted like that when we were together. I don't know why he's worried. Or why he acts like he cares when he told me he hates me. I don't know. And I'm so confused and I don't know what to do or how to feel and I don't know how to act around him. It's fucking with my head. Atsumu cried as he embraced himself. I love him. I love him and he hurt me so much and I don't want to feel that pain again. I was ready to move on from him but suddenly he's doing all the things I've always wanted him to do. He's treating me the way I've always wanted him to treat me. He's making me feel loved and I don't know how I can move on now. Not when there's nothing I want more than to go back to him. And I know it's wrong. Our relationship was toxic and I don't want to go back to that ever again but I love him. I don't want to be in love anymore. Atsumu crouched on the ground as he held his head, sobbing as he pours his soul out. Atsumu felt two bodies on his sides, realizing that Kajima and Hoshiumi is hugging him. The two didn't speak since they don't know what to say, so they just showed their support physically instead. Atsumu took a few minutes to calm down before he wiped his tears away and stood up. He stumbled slightly because his head hurts even more now after his breakdown. Thankfully, Hoshiumi and Kajima were still holding him. I need to get ready. Get ready for what? I'm going out with Ko and the others. What? Is that okay Atsumu-san? Yetsumu. You need to rest. No. No. I need I need Koa. I want to get out of this place for a while. Atsumu wasn't in any state to move, much less go exploring. But both Hoshiumi and Kajima know that he's in desperate need of a break. Preferably somewhere far away from Sakusa. Okay then I'm coming. What? You don't have to. I'm a third year too so I can go out. Plus, I do get bored here. I'm coming too. I already have permission anyway. Atsumu's eyes still sting. His head is still pounding. He still feels like he's going to puke any second. And his heart never stopped hurting. But Atsumu is once again reminded that he actually have real friends who will be there for him. So Atsumu smiled. Knowing he'll be okay. Thank you.